Hi Booktube, this is Johnny. Thought I'd make a video since it's been well, at least a couple days since I made a video. Decided to make a video here in the dining room instead of the sunroom. A lot of people like the sunroom video, but I like the sitting here in the dining room because I have a table and I can look into the camera more easier. And today is a Sunday, September the 3rd. 2017 is 4 13 in the morning not in the morning late afternoon here and it's kind of nice out kind of sunny middle 70s nice weather so I'm sitting here reading the introduction to this um, edition of the De Decamperion by Bocellini Baccalini uh, I had read, I finished the introduction to this edition and I've read up to day one, story six. I, I should read, well, I should, I try, I'm supposed to read 30 pages a day. So I should be on page 90. I should be right there and I'll probably read that tonight. But I wanted to read the introduction to this one just to get more and I wanted to compare the different translations. I, I'm enjoying this translation. It's very smooth, very fluid, uh, very easy to read. So I'm, but I haven't read this translation. This is the one I bought first and I just want to compare them. Just kind of curious. So I've been reading those. And uh, I did get out, you know, I mentioned in my video that uh, Baccalini, uh, Bocellini, or Baccalini was influenced by Dante's Inferno. I got these when I was in seminary back in the 80s. I had, a, I had to read these for a big term paper. Uh, I really enjoyed them. This is uh, Dante's Inferno, Divine Comedy, Hell. Uh, Volume 2 is Purgatory, and this is my favorite, is Paradise. I read these like, you know, shoot, it must be almost 25, at least 30 years ago. Maybe at least 30 years ago. A long time ago. <laughs> I just thought I'd get them out and show them to you. So yeah, so I've been reading those, I haven't been reading Dante's Inferno, but I have been reading these. And as uh, far as in the morning, from when I was looking at my September diary, I've been kind of out of it in the mornings. So I really haven't been reading my Christian books. Uh, well, yesterday morning we went to Grand Rapids. Well, yeah, this is Sunday. So Saturday we got up, we went to the farmer's market, we went grocery shopping, and then Saturday afternoon we drove over to Grand Rapids to celebrate uh, our granddaughter's third birthday. Her birthday is really next Saturday, but Carol works next Saturday, but she was off this Saturday. So we wanted to give Josie her present and you know, sing happy birthday, take photos. So we did that yesterday. We did, uh, before we went to my son and his wife's and Josie's place and Emily's pregnant with their second child, we stopped at a Schuler's Books in Grand Rapids and I wanted to go there because they sell used books. They're kind of expensive, which means they're about six, seven dollars. But I wanted to go just to see what they have and I bought this novel, A Buffalo Afternoon by Susan Fomberg Schaefer. I got this because I had just picked up from the library bookstore, used bookstore, Anna, Anna, by her. And so I kind of thought, well, if I'm going to buy anything, something that I, an author that I started collecting, 
Uh, Buffalo Afternoon is like a Vietnam novel here. In this major new novel, Susan Fromberg Schaefer, author of the best-selling acclaimed novels, Anna and the Madness of a Seduced Woman, takes a striking new course. Buffalo Afternoon tells the story of three generations of the Brafado family immigrated from Italy to Brooklyn, blue-collar, determined, proud, troubled, and gives us a vivid understanding of the full cost of the Vietnam War in the life of one of the Bravado Bro, Brododos, I can't pronounce, son, is her most ambitious and most timely and revivant novels. So I just picked that up. And uh, so like I said, I've not been really reading much. I was reading, I mentioned I was reading uh, The Life of Isaiah Berlin. Uh, I suppose that was like Friday. I think Friday was the first week, the first day of September. Yeah, Friday was the first of September. And I remember reading Isaiah Berlin. Uh, I got in the mail, I don't know if I've mentioned this, I got this novel by Rick Moody, his last novel, Hotels of North America, no, a novel by Rick Moody. Uh, I might read this or look at it throughout the month of September. I'm not going to do to be read throughout the month of September. I know that I am going to read this and and check out the translation with this translation. And um, I know that I'll probably read, continue reading The Life of Isaiah Berlin. And I have been reading The, the Book of Disquieted by Fernando Pesetti. Peste, and also I've been comparing it with this one I've already read. So that's all I know that I'm going to really be reading. I don't know what I'm going to be reading in the morning as, as a Christian reading. I, I just kind of out of it right now. I can't really focus on anything in the mornings. So I get up and I just write in my diary and feed the birds and kind of just sit in silence. So still have my Bible. Not, right now I can't think of any verses that are on my mind that I've been thinking about today. Yeah, just, I suppose I'm kind of spaced out. But I wanted to check in, tell you what I've been reading, what's going on. Yeah, that's about it. I have really a found this kind of surprising. I thought it might be a difficult read, but it's really easy to read. It's kind of, a, as a Christian, it gives me pause to think because uh, there's a lot of religion, uh, Catholicism in this book, uh, maybe a mockery of that kind of Catholicism at that time. I can't say that... Uh, Boccalini was devout or a devout Catholic, but it's surprising. It kind of shows you that a person who is unregenerate can know spiritual truth and yet reject it and make fun of it, which is kind of, well, just it's kind of damning. Uh, but anyway, kind of enjoying it. So that's about it all uh, here this Sunday late afternoon. Uh, tomorrow's Monday. I have no plans for tomorrow. I was looking on the computer to see if any thrift stores are open tomorrow. Salvation Army is open, not Goodwill. So I might go out there, but they're having a, some kind of sale on Monday, and I might get mobbed by a bunch of people, so I might just stay here all day and read my books and write in my diary and watch the birds and sit in silence. 
I haven't been in the mood in the, in the mood listen to any kind of music either. Uh, I did watch some uh, college football yesterday. Watch the uh, Michigan and what they play. Michigan played. Can't remember now. <laughs> My mind went blank. But I did watch the Alabama and Florida game last night. I didn't watch the whole game. I, I went to bed. We went to bed early, and so I taped the last half of the game. And this morning when I got up, I watched it. I speeded through it to see who won. I'm kind of like an Alabama fan, but not. I'm not really a gun hole kind of. But I like good football games, college football. So I'm, I always kind of root for Alabama. I don't know why. When uh, we lived in Mississippi, when we were in seminary there in Jackson, Mississippi. And then when we lived in Texas, it was Texas A&M and the Texas Longhorns. And then when we were in Mississippi, it was Mississippi Old Miss in Alabama. The Razorbacks and the Arkansas football was just a religion there in the South. But I don't know. So... When we lived in Jackson, Mississippi, when the stadium where they played, Ole Miss played their games, we could hear the roar <laughs> from the seminary. Uh, anyway, I'll just sign off, hoping you're having, uh, you had a good weekend, that you have a good new week. And until next time, bye.